Hey guys, uh, Mr. B here again, bringing you another lovely math video. Um, this one in my calculus uh, series of videos, and this one on the concept of a limit. Uh, it's probably, you know, one of the first few classes you step into a calculus class, and uh, you know, you discuss the idea of limit, and I think sometimes one of the things that's often forgot in, you know, you're calculating limits, you're doing all these wonderful things, um, but the idea and concept of what exactly is a limit. Um, the example I give to my students is the idea of a circle. And I start with a triangle. And if I look at a tri oh, I always hate when it does that. Let's see if I can make it stop doing that. Um, the idea of a triangle. So a triangle, if you look at it, is not really close to a circle at all. But then we add, you know, a couple more sides and we get, you know, a pentagon still not really close to a circle. So then we go to seven sides. You know, it's getting a little bit closer to a circle. Then let's go to nine. You know, a little bit closer still. Then we have 11. And still a bit closer. And then we go to 13. So you can imagine what would happen if I kept adding sides and sides and sides and sides. You know, eventually it keeps it keeps getting closer and closer and closer and closer to looking like a circle. But is it actually a circle? Well, no, because if we zoomed up on it, we would have, you know, um, little sides. If we got really, really close to it, so it wouldn't actually be a circle. The only time it would actually be a circle is if we can somehow go to infinity and get as close to um, being a circle as possible. That will be an infinite number of dots or sides. So, you know, the idea of a limit is that you're approaching something. And, you know, in this case, the limit was the circle. You know, as we add sides, we're approaching, we're getting closer and closer to this idea of the shape of a circle. Well, with numerical limits, we're getting closer and closer and closer to a number. So this is what you might see um, you know, in your first couple of days of calculus class, you might see a graph like this, and your prof comes in and tells you, well, as you approach from the left side of your graph, and you're, you know, you're going down it, maybe I'll get a marker out here, uh, let's do red, and you're going down it from the left side, you're going this way, you're getting closer as we approach this empty circle, we're not really sure what's happening there, uh, as we approach it, we're getting closer and closer to, well, we're getting closer to one, right here, this guy. And then we do the same thing from the right side. You're writing down this red, this uh, graph. And as we approach from the right side, we're approaching, again, we're approaching 1. So how you might write that, and this is what it looks numeric, uh, and you know, what you'll, the, the form you'll see, the limit. I'm actually going to try to write really neat. Now, I usually handwrite my limits. It's really hard to do on, uh, when you're doing, like, with a pen tablet. As x approaches... Um, one from the left side. So x approaches this one. Maybe I should have picked a different graph. But anyway, of f of x, so whatever the function might be, is actually equal to this one. So what y is essentially one. And then from the right side, limit as x approaches one from the right side. So you notice that I use a little negative sort of a negative as the exponent or whatever you want to call it, a uh, superscript. And then the same thing for this plus sign, the, uh, the minus sign meaning from the left, the plus sign meaning from the right, um, of f of x is equal to 1. So what we notice is that as we approach from both sides, we appro we're approaching the same number. So that's another fundamental concept of a limit, that in order for a limit to exist, it has to approach the same number from both sides of the graph. So if I, uh, what I can say from this, based on having these two things, I can then make the conjecture. If, only if these things are true, I can say this. I need to have both of these things truly equal to the same number. Then I can say the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x is equal to 1. So all I'm really saying with this is that as it gets really, really close to 1 here, 
really, really close to it. And then the graph is on the find actually at one. So, um, you know, we, we can't actually get to one. But as it gets really, 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 really close to it, you know, the value of my graph, y, f of x, is also one. So, um, you know, it, it seems like a lim the idea of a limit seems like a, such a complex topic, but it's actually fairly straightforward when you break it down. So let's have a look at a, another graph and see what you guys think of it. So let's let's uh, do the one-sided limits for this guy. So if I look at this is from the left side, so the limit as x approaches, and we're going to go with let's see one, two, three, four, yeah. So that's one again. X approaches one from the left side of f of x, and this is a piecewise graph, and these are very common in first-year calculus. Um, and it approaches, if you look here, that looks to be uh, negative four. So we go across from that point right there at negative four. So as you approach here to one, it goes to negative four. Now from the right side, the limit, the lin, let's see, try that again, eh? The limit as x approaches 1 from the right side, so you're going this way down your graph, and you're getting really, really close to here. It looks like we're approaching 1, 2, 3. So, of f of x is equal to 3. So, if you look at it, our one-sided limits are not equal. So what we we can't really say anything about this. All we can say is that the limit of x approaches one does not exist. That mean girl moment, right? The limit does not exist. So um, yeah, that's really that's you know that is a fundamental to understanding of limits is that limits have to approach the same from both sides so both one side limits have to be the same um, and it goes back to this one you know you it's easy to sort of look at the graph and tell well this one doesn't have a jump this one has a jump discontinuity here right so um, all right so let's look at one last example that you might see in calculus class and uh, these are the kind of monotonous examples but anyway um, so you have a t you have a function, and your professor asks you to, to um, or your teacher, me, asks you to um, evaluate the one-sided limits um, by making a chart. So it's kind of the same thing numerically as it was visually. So if I put one in here, what I notice right away is that I have um, z division by zero. So I have a non-permissible value at x equals one or a discontinuity, uh, point of discontinuity, whatever you want to call it. So right here, I have no idea what's happening. That's the hole in our graph. That's all it is, the hole in our graph. So if I you know, subbed in 0 0.9 into this guy, and what I'll do first to make my life a little bit easier is I'll actually reduce this down because um, you know, this factors to x minus 1 x plus 3 all over x minus 1 and what happens is this cancels and when you get cancellation like that that means that you have a point of discontinuity so it'll look like the first graph that we had the parabola with the hole in it essentially well this one actually be just a line with the hole in it because of what we're left with x plus 3 so if I sub 0 0.9 into here I'm gonna have 3.9 if I sub in 0 0.99 you know, I have um, 3.99. I do the same thing here, 3.999. So if you look at it, as I'm approaching um, a, uh, 1 from the left side, so from the left side, it looks like I'm approaching 4. Like, so I keep getting closer and closer to that number 4. And I'll do it over here from the, um, from the right side. So it's going to be... Um, 4.001, 4.01, 4.1. So if I come from the right side, again, I'm getting closer and closer to 4. And you know, I could keep making this 4.9999999, and I still, each time, I keep getting closer and closer to 4. 
So what I can say in this situation is that the limit so x approaches 4, or sorry, 1, of this f of x, I'm not going to write it out, you should, if you're on a test, you should write the whole thing out, is 4, because both one-sided limits are approaching the same number. So guys, I hope this helps. Uh, if you're looking for some more concrete examples of how to do limits, um, some, you know, indeterminate values, things like that, you should go out, check my page. I got a ton of videos on uh, solving some more complicated limits because let's be honest, you're not probably not going to get this stuff on a test. You're going to be asked how to use this stuff, but it's still fundamental to understanding calculus, which is really important in how to pass calculus. You have to really think about it on a much deeper level and do lots of questions. So, um, hope this helps and I'll see you guys in class.